today I thought we'd take a look at the new Microsoft Surface Pro 4 to see what it offers over a traditional laptop and to see what it's like to use on a daily basis for all of your typical computer tasks. If you're in the market for a Surface Pro, you probably want to know if it's worth considering over a regular laptop and if the added functionality of having a full-on computer with pen input combined with the ability to convert to a dedicated tablet is something that makes the Surface a wise decision over a traditional laptop. I mainly use my desktop PC for all my computer needs and it's by far my preferred method of computing. Any other time I'm not sitting at my desk, for example on the couch, a trip or a vacation or just at the coffee shop, I'll usually bring my girlfriend's MacBook Air or reach for my iPad. So I wanted to see if the Surface Pro 4 could replace one or both of these devices for us and take a permanent space around our very limited and highly sought after couch real estate. So first let's go over some of the design and hardware features of the Surface, talk about how it performs day to day, and then give you a sense of what it's like to use what I think is a really nice piece of hardware. So here is the Microsoft Surface Pro and what I have is the Core i5 eight, with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD storage and the SSD is much improved on these versus previous Surface Pros because they're PCIe based not SATA based so you get a lot faster disk performance out of these versus the older Surface Pro so that's really nice that's a really premium SSD in there. Now this one retails for $1299 and with the touch cover it's another $129 so all in all with tax on $1400 for this machine and you know that is an expensive piece of kit for sure but what you get is a really nice piece of hardware and a powerful Windows 10 machine. So just to go over some of the hardware features here obviously the keyboard is detachable and um, just going around you get one USB 3.0 port so just a single port there a mini display output so what you can do obviously power external monitors with that and then there's the uh, charging connector here which they call this the service connect so you can get a docking station if you want it if you want to run multiple USB devices or you want to um, output to multiple monitors so they changed it from the Surface Pro 3 uh, which was a, a nice sliding in docking station so I don't know why they changed it but they did um, but they did say with the new docking station it's going to be compatible with all future Surface Pro so that's uh, pretty nice. And just going around the edge here you know you have power button on the top, volume rocker left and right and um, or up and down and then the speakers here are right in the front you can see they're just kind of built in the bezel you know they're they're not anything special you get nice separation because they're out to the left and right but as far as that they don't sound like they're not exceptional sounding speakers not bad but you know they sound like pretty much any laptop to me so along the bottom of the device is where you have a magnetic connection here to attach the touch cover and it attaches really nicely and securely you can see very easily attaches on there and it makes a strong connection with the keyboard when they're when they're attached and then along the left hand side you do have a headphone port and then along the Along the back for the last port on the device behind the kickstand you do, do get this nice micro SD uh, card slot which helps with expandability for storage so if you want to um, add to your storage functionality you can just use that port which is really really convenient. Along the top hand portion of the device you'll see these fan vents and this is important to note because the fans on this device are actually very audible. I noticed it a lot when I was watching video and my dad and also my girlfriend on different occasions actually asked me what the noise was. So you can definitely, you're definitely going to hear them kick on and if you're in a quiet place or watching video you're going to hear it in the background. And then um, as far as cameras go you do get a 5 megapixel camera in the front as you can see there and then on the back you get an 8 megapixel camera and I will say that the picture quality of both of these cameras were really nice and especially the video quality I was actually pretty surprised by the video quality on the front of the camera when I was Skyping. So I think it's important to take a minute to talk about the form factor of the device since I'd have to say that the kickstand it uses was one of the, my main hesitations with the Surface Pro as I thought it would be a real pain to use on a day in and day out basis but as it turns out it works really really well it's dampened nicely and has a pretty wide range to it as far as what you can position it to and the different angles it can orient itself. Now compared to handling versus a traditional notebook, there's obviously a slight trade-off here. Compared to something like my MacBook Air, the Surface Pro definitely takes two hands to handle pretty much any time you're going to pick it up or set it down. Whereas with most laptops, you can easily manage with a single hand by just grabbing and holding it from a corner. It's not a huge deal, but you do give up a little bit of ease of use for the convertibility of the Surface Pro compared to a standard notebook. The Surface Pro 4 weighs just over 2.4 pounds and travels well. It feels great in the hand because the touch cover has a nice suede texture to it and it's about the size of a paper notebook so it's really easy to carry by your side also. 
The tablet by itself weighs 1.7 pounds, and you can see here that there's a significant difference in size and weight versus something like an iPad Air 2, which only weighs a pound, or just under a pound. While I know the iPad isn't a full-on computer, when using the Surface as a standalone tablet, you definitely notice the difference just due to the additional size and weight of it. And what happens is that you don't end up holding it with one hand for very long. Luckily, this is where the kickstand comes in, and it works really well. In bed watching videos or just on the couch doing some casual web browsing or emailing, the kickstand was really convenient because you could easily prop it up and have both hands free and almost made me wish there was one on the iPad. As far as the lapability of the Surface Pro when using it like a laptop, I was actually surprised by how well the kickstand and detachable keyboard work together. Like I mentioned earlier, I thought it was going to be annoying compared to using a regular laptop, but using it in my lap, in a chair, on a table, laying in bed or laying on the couch, I was able to find a comfortable position pretty much every time. While not quite as ergonomic overall as a traditional laptop, it was still plenty functional. It does have a really excellent screen. It's 12.3 uh, inches across and the 2736 by 1834 is the resolu resolution. And what that gives you is 260 PPI. And so as a result, everything on the screen looks really sharp. It's really, really nice screen to work on. You know, even compared to your typical 4K monitors, those only give you about 160 PPI. So this is much, much sharper. And I noticed it right off the bat, especially compared to my own, my own computer monitor. So it's really nice to work on. You see here, you do get a lot of glare on it because uh, it's glossy. And so, you know, using it outside wasn't the easiest. It, I was definitely able to type some of this review outside. But you can get it, you know, it just depends on the angle you're at outside. You can get it, you can definitely use it outside. It's just not going to be ideal. So getting to the touchpad here, you can see the keys, they improve the keyboard. It's spaced out now and it's really good to key travel. The touchpad works good. I'm sure if you've seen any, any review, they all kind of, everybody comments on it. It's a bigger touchpad and it's made of glass. And so I think they pretty much resolved all issues with the touch cover from previous generations. And it's nice because you can angle it up like this and uh, type on it, or if you wanted to lay it flat, it works really well on a, on, a, on a flat, hard surface. It works really well in the lap as well. It doesn't flop around as much as you might think, or as much as I thought for sure. Really easy to type on. I didn't feel like I was really giving anything up versus a regular laptop keyboard at all. It's just as good as any keyboard and certainly any Windows trackpad I've ever used. So I don't really have any complaints about that, to be honest. But one thing I do want to mention is about the pen. So it attaches to the left hand side, which I'm sure you guys know magnetically, and it can actually attach to the right hand side as well. Uh, but it can attach to the top, which I thought would have been a better solution to kind of get it, the pen out of the way. Because what happens is when you have this sitting, you know, around and you want to grab it and set it up, when you're flipping out the kickstand or just holding it, you're constantly kind of fighting the pen coming off, or you got to just take it off real quick. So it's a little bit, you know, awkward. In my opinion, I actually preferred having the pen detached for the most part unless I knew I was going to specifically use it. I've been a heavy OneNote user for a few years now on my desktop, but adding the ability to mark those notes up with a pen and to take handwritten notes on it was awesome. Especially when using ruled lines, it was really easy to be able to write like a normal notebook and you can zoom in and out pretty quickly so that you can write however small or large you wanted. It was also easy to keep your handwriting neat too because the palm rejection worked on it so well. And to me, the killer feature compared to regular paper is that you're able to search through your notes using the search function to find specific sections, words, or tags instead of having to manually flip through pages and pages of a notebook. The top of the pen also has a button that has an eraser-like texture on it so you can easily erase your handwriting and also doubles as a button that is clickable so that you can quickly launch one note. Take screenshots or call up Cortana. It also has another button near the tip that functions like a right click as well. The pen comes in five different colors and you can change out the tips, although the HB tip that it comes with is the most natural feeling and from what I've read, the other options feel a lot more slick on the glass screen. Finally, while I'm not an artist at all, just messing around with the pen in different paint programs was pretty fun. Microsoft says it has 1,024 levels of input sensitivity, but I could honestly only tell maybe about 10 of those. But if you needed a more in-depth review on its ability as an artist tool, there are a lot better videos online from actual artists. But to me, it's just a really useful input device that works extraordinarily well. The Surface Pro 4 is mainly a productivity machine, but I did try out some gaming on it. I loaded Far Cry, but was only able to get about 10 frames a second, while games like Dota 2 and Team Fortress, while playable, they were still sometimes choppy. So while you are able to play some basic games on it, it's obviously more of a workhorse device. So while this is a great machine, there are a couple somewhat minor drawbacks to it. 
Using it pretty heavily over the past three weeks, I found the battery life to be just okay. It's rated at around seven to eight hours, but it just always kind of felt like it needed to be plugged into me. However, compared to any other similarly high resolution touch enabled notebook currently on the market, for example, the touchscreen Dell XPS 13, the battery life on the Surface Pro 4 with the Skylake processor is actually on the high end of the scale. The fan noise was also slightly annoying, but may or may not bother you as much. Also, the Windows Store is still very lacking, and when using the Surface Pro 4 in tablet mode, strictly for entertainment purposes or simple web browsing, I just found myself reaching for my iPad more often. However, the Surface Pro 4 is an amazing device overall, and if you're an artist who needs a pen for creativity reasons, or someone that wants the ability to take a lot of handwritten notes or markup documents, and needs the full functionality and flexibility of a powerful Windows 10 laptop, it's a device that fills that role perfectly, and I would highly recommend it. But that's it for this review, guys. Please give a thumbs up or remember to subscribe, and thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice